Welcome to Motorsport Coaching, the podcast for racers with racers. Miss Motivate can help get you to the next level. Every episode, she talks to the best racers of today and those that can get you there. She'll help you get better. Racing new. At fitness, nutrition, sports psychology, sponsorship, social media, public relations, and media training. Connect with Miss Motivate at motivatetraining.com.au. That's M O T I V, the number eight, training.com.au. And now, to help get you to the next level, Miss Motivate herself, Belinda Risley. Hello, crew, and welcome to episode 145 of the Most Sport Coaching Podcast. I am your host, Belinda Risley, and today I am joined by 21 year old superstar Marley Chapman. Marley has achieved a lot in her short career of three years. We're going to hear about her opportunities that she's grasped and her current role within Ducati as a marketing specialist for Australia and New Zealand. Also coming up in the month of May, um, inside the Most Sports Sponsorship Group, we are focusing on last minute getting sponsorship, uh, social media content, as well as public relations. So how you can do it yourself around writing press releases and getting exposure. So if you haven't already, please race over and join our free Motorsport Sponsorship Facebook group um, to get those daily tips. All right, let's get started with today's show. Welcome to the Motorsport Coaching Podcast, Marley. Thanks for having me. Well, I've got you on. I recently met you at the Girls on Track networking event. Um, and I just love your story. You've achieved so much at the tender age of 20, had so much work experience, uni courses, studying, internships. Oh, my God. So I want to basically pack them, unpack them all. Um, and tell us a little bit about you. Well, I mean, I just turned 21 last week. Um, that's very new. Um, I... <laughs> Thanks. Um, I, yeah, like you said, I've, I mean, I've had a bit of experience in the last few years trying to start my career and all the rest of it. Um, you know, I grew up with a lot of sport, um, not necessarily motorsport. I don't come from a motorsport background at all. Like my parents aren't into it. My brother's not into it. It was kind of just like a, an onset thing that I, that stemmed from my sport, my love for sport. Um, yeah, my ultimate goal was originally get into the sports industry and then some opportunities arose and motorsport became my whole life basically now. <laughs> yeah. So when you said um, opportunities arose, what was that opportunity and how did it arise? If you weren't like predominantly from the background, um, I mean, there's that well, that it's like who you know in the industry and not what you know. So how did that opportunity come up? Um, so I decided to start studying at university, a uh, Bachelor of Business with major in marketing a um, couple years ago now. I think it was about two years ago. And I that was during the COVID period. And I didn't really enjoy online study. So I decided to transfer to um, a school in Melbourne. Um, and that meant that I had to relocate from a little town in Byron Bay to um, this big city in Melbourne. And that was a huge leap. And from from taking that risk and, and what not to study in a new city, um, opportunity to work with Motorsport Australia came about um, after, you know, trying to find a job in sport. And I just, it was actually just after the Formula One Grand Prix. Um, I went there as a general admission person, like just went there because I enjoyed Formula One. And I met someone who recommended that I join this Girls on Track Facebook group. And there was an ad posted on the Facebook group for Motorsport Australia. And I applied and I was lucky enough to, to get to work with them. Yeah. What did you do there? Um, I was a media and communications assistant. And what did that entail? What kind of tasks were you doing there? Um, yeah, I mean, it involved multitude of things um it could I was working with the Australian off-road championship the Australian rally championship circuit racing um it could be anything from going to the events and helping out to social media to content creation to writing blog posts on the motorsport Australia website and and a lot of a lot of things like that in the media department yeah Awesome. But your love isn't really four wheels. Your love is more two wheels. 
Uh, you used to do some motorbike riding yourselves um, or just you had a passion for motorbikes? Yeah, I, I, still, I still do. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. So um, I started riding motorbikes just after high school. Um, basically just because mm-hmm. all of my my friends were doing it. I was driving a car and they were riding motorbikes. I felt a bit left out. So I was like, oh, I might try it. And ended up loving it, absolutely loving it. Um, and, yeah, I did that for a couple of years. Um, and then I have tried my space at some track days at um, at Broadford in, in Victoria and – Loved it. Really want to get into two wheel bike racing in the future, but that's a goal that I'm trying to work towards as well as on top of my own career. Um, yeah, I love love riding motorbikes. My huge passion. Yeah. So you started out um, just doing some vlogs and blogs. So what was your first university degree? So what was that, what happened once you finished high school and you went, I want to be a sports marketer. And what like courses did you do? Um, so originally I didn't actually want to do marketing. Um, originally it was uh, physiotherapy, osteopathy in the sport industry because I really wanted a career where I could work in sport and work with people to help people and help basically athletes and, and travel with them on these exciting adventures and events and what whatever else there was. And I think... You know, I had a chat to my mom and she was kind of like, oh, like, you're really good at social media. Like, I, when I was a bit younger, I was a competitive gymnast and this is, with this, I had some sponsorships through that sport and um, to get me overseas and to competitions and whatnot. And I guess she saw that I had a talent for, I don't know, the personable skills that I could you know, relate in a career perspective. And so that's what made me change to the marketing sector, but still staying in that sport sport sector. Um, one of the first subjects I did was like, I think it was marketing research and planning and strategic marketing. Um, but also with a business degree, um, we have to do the accounting, the finance, economics, and, you know, maybe the not so relevant stuff, but it's ultimately benefited me like astronomically already yeah it's really important so that was the first one you did so it was a bachelor of um i kind of think of social media oh so you did oh you did i was i was sorry i was going to start in osteopathy and then i decided to just go straight into business yeah so you've done um bachelor of business i haven't finished yet i finish uh i should be finishing next year very good. And so after your time at Motorsports Australia uh, and with your love of motorbikes, where are you working now? Um, yeah, so uh, I just recently got a job as the marketing speciali- specialist marketing specialist for Ducati Australia and New Zealand, um, something that, that actually came up just late last year, um, also through the Girls on Track Facebook group. It was um, it was promoted that they were looking for someone who had you know lots of experience, lots of like had the degree, had all this, and ultimately I think the one thing that got me over the over the edge in that um, process was my passion for two wheels, of, um, more so because I didn't have the the three years experience or the you know the top degree, but I had that passion and that willingness to learn this new skill. <laughs> so Ducati's been you know, a huge step for my career. And you relocated for the role? Yes, yes. So (laughs) another relocation. So, you know, I went from Byron, the small town, to Melbourne to pursue my degree. And then late last year I packed up my stuff again after a year of living in Melbourne and I've now moved to Sydney and that's where I am at the moment. And are you moving by yourself if you've got a partner or a friend or you just go on this big adventure by yourself? Um, at the moment, it's kind of by myself, yeah. <laughs> um, I have a huge support back home, though. Like, my mum and dad are huge supports, but ultimately, um, you know, on the travelling road show, it's a one-woman show for the moment. <laughs> just moving by myself, you know, kind of that whole leaving home in that realm as well and, you know, just chasing after my dreams. <laughs> yes, yeah, but like, look at all the opportunities that have been opened up for you, and look where it, 
the role that you've got today. So can you tell us a little bit about that marketing role for Australia and New Zealand and what does it actually involve? Yeah, so, I mean, again, it has a huge, like marketing such a huge umbrella and there's lots of little little stems under that umbrella. I mean, for Ducati specifically at the moment, um, I can be in charge from anything to, you know, organising event details from flights, accommodation, to, you know, what motorbikes we take to the events. Um, I'm also in charge of the fleet, the whole press fleet. So say, for example, if a publication comes to us and says, can we please borrow this bike for a review or a video or anything like that, I'm the point of contact. Um, Also things like brand campaigns. Um, We've got um, brand campaigns. Um making sure that the campaigns stay on a budget, making sure um, these budgets get approved so that we can go forward with events. Um, Yeah, I mean, we just finished, sorry, we just started the um, Adventure Roadshow for Acidin 2. And we took 10 bikes total and um, they were ultimately... People came in, they're going to test ride the bikes and, you know, we welcome them and they get to test ride them. <laughs> yeah, just lots of events mostly. <laughs> yeah. And so, like, with the idea of them getting to purchase a Ducati? Yeah, so ultimately you want to um, get out there to the public um, kind of ranges we offer and, you know, adventure, the adventure range is very new to Ducati. Like, it's only a few years years old and so we're trying to make sure that everyone knows that sure we dominate in the race bike sector but also we have a lot of other different bikes to choose from fantastic Um, i'm just gonna go back and like a big step here because obviously you're like you're at uni and um you can't just go to uni and apply for a job off a wing and get starting to work at motorsports australia you have done lots of internships and done lots of work experience what kind of things were you doing back then um and you also mentioned about being a gymnast and having sponsors so what kind of social media content creation were you doing back then to get you to build, I guess, your portfolio in order to get the job when you didn't have so much the, uh, I guess, the experience um, in a business sense, but you had the experience on a social sense. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I started very young working. Um, I started actually as a volunteer social media coordinator for the Byron Community Centre, um, ultimately creating content for marketing stores because Byron has, you know, markets on you know specific days and you know I'd be into some of the marketers and I'd be writing social media posts and captions for that and that was originally just a volunteer role um and so you know I just wanted to get the experience um I've worked in law firms as a volunteer for um content creation back home so you know I wasn't writing the blog post because you know there's specific law and legal requirements for it but um I was um doing Facebook campaigns ad campaigns you know and I was kind of learning as I was going because one I wasn't getting paid but on the other side I was benefiting from that experience and the knowledge that came with it um I also worked as a casual for a construction company as well um making content again on social media mostly and doing a little bit of website design because you know they wanted to hire three different people and I decided that I could be all three of those people um, and, you know, it kind of them helping me and then I helped them. So it really worked out well with that one. Um, then I went on to actually when I moved to Melbourne, um, I started off um, at a snowboard shop and I was the social media manager for that. Um, that was really exciting because, I also have sponsorships personally with the snowboarding community. So um, from my knowledge, I could, you know, from my knowledge of, you know, having the sponsors and how to reach out, that also translated into my social media skills for this snowboard brand Um, and selling these snowboards. And then when I was at RMIT, uh, when I was at the university in Melbourne, Um, I was a sports media program volunteer. So 
what that entailed was going to, you know, social club events like, you know, the university has basketball teams, volleyball teams, soccer teams, all the rest of it, snow teams as well. And I would go there, I would, you know, work with the content creators and we'd make posts on Instagram, Facebook, sometimes for the official like RMIT website um, and you know we just it was a great environment we I learned lots of stuff you know um, I learned um, you know how to make more personal relationships and I think it was really beneficial for me more so than them because you know we had weekly meetings and it was a really good way to also you know immerse myself into the university culture because as I said like I came from this small little town in New South Wales to this big city and it was a really good way to learn and and meet people and some of those people who I was working with at the you know in the program was people who have gone on to work for big news companies and we still stay in touch and it's it's really really cool to see that Um, and then again with RMIT I was a social media marketing manager volunteer um, for a short stint because I was actually supposed to be for the whole year, but because I had to transfer, I was only there for a short period of time. Um, so that was for the snow sports team. And it was very similar to working at the snowboard shop, I guess. Um, you know, uh, just from that translating of my personal snowboard experience, um, going into this role was really cool. And it was really, again, a really great environment because, you know, you're not meeting KPIs, you're not meeting all these things, but you're having fun as as you go along. And I think that was really the benefit of these university programs. And it really, you know, you experience and you learn so much from them. Um, Yeah, and then I guess from Sydney now, I'm a... I'm the official director of social media um, for the UTS Motorsports Electric Team. So... That's basically, we're basically a team of students from engineering business. Um, that's Everyone comes from very different um, uh, degrees that they're studying, but we all come together as one and ultimately what happens is we build a, um electric race car and with that electric race car, we take it to Winton at the end of the year and we compete against all the other universities in Australia to try and win, you know, certain sections of of the race so yeah it's it's very exciting lots has happened <laughs> in the last like three years. three years and it's just amazing do you ever kind of sit back and go oh wow like when it, you're kind of rattling it all off then did you go wow I really done a lot like you've <laughs> moved you've moved twice to big cities like I said you've started two new universities like new friend groups um different businesses volunteering your time like it's just amazing Molly uh, and I guess one way like that you were rewarded was um, that you were fortunate enough to be uh, a part of the Girls on Track Formula One Grand Prix mentoring experience. Uh, and I quite often do get asked, um, being a Girl on Track champion, what is that experience like? So another reason I wanted to have you on today so that you could tell everyone a little bit about that day and what it involved. And uh, yeah, what have you got out of it so far? Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, sometimes I sit back and I'm like, oh, my gosh, there's so much on my plate. What am I doing? <laughs> I <laughs> but other times it's like, wow, I'm so fortunate to have all these opportunities, you know, like, and I just think, yeah, I'm, I'm very lucky, very, very grateful. Um, but, yeah, so the Girls on Track event, we um, that's where we met, you know, a few weeks ago, which was really great. Um, basically, so I guess this how the day started was we all – met up at the gates, we got our little tags and we went into the room on the water. Um, This day started with a bit of um, uh, mentoring from um, some of the champions, some of the ambassadors. We had Nadine, Emma, um, Jess, Tanea. um, I won't be able to say everyone's name because (laughs) off the top of my head because there were so many, but it was really incredible, all all the ambassadors and champions. Um, we started off with kind of getting to know everyone, getting to know their backgrounds. We went through like little training course at the start of the day where, you know, what, what careers and everything people want to go into. And we were kind of sectioned into like some girls wanted to be engineers, marketers, um, drivers and um, photographers. And I think it was really cool to kind of group us like that because, 
you know, not only are we getting industry experience and, you know, talking, sorry, talking to industry professionals in that industry, but also talking to each other. Like I think the girls to be talking back and forth is huge. Like being able to connect with someone like for me, for example, I connected one of the girls who I was sitting next to in marketing. She's in the um, QUT motorsport team and motorsport electric team. And because I'm in the UTS motorsport electric team, we bonded over that. And now, you know, we got each other's Instagrams. We're staying up to date with their LinkedIn's, you know, what are we doing? And ultimately I'm going to see her at Winton racetrack at the end of the year with university. So it's, I think that's really cool. Not only seeing, you know, the presenters and all these fabulous women who have gone on to do such great things, but also at the grassroots level, it's really important to make those connections as well, because, you know, me and this girl from QUT, we're going to go on and kind of build together. We're going to build our careers at the same time and and share that journey. I think that's really special. Um, So I guess, yeah, then we went on to a um, special talk with Claudia and Kate Peck. Um, I was very fortunate enough to be able to work with Claudia last year at Motorsport Australia. Um, We both worked in the media and communications department. Um, Our desks were right next to each other so it was really cool to see her up there on stage and you know seeing sharing her experience with all the girls because I think you know her her story is you know one that should be told Um, it's gonna be told she She is um booked to come on to the podcast as well oh fabulous fabulous I look forward to listening um yeah she's incredible um and then we had the networking lunch so that involved um industry professionals coming in and we were told to we were given a list of all of the people who were here um and I remember you were one of them <laughs> I was like gotta go see her before we have the interview <laughs> gotta go see Belinda um yeah so we got a list of names of who was here we had people from like Ferrari um Motivate we had um drivers we had you know engineers from Alfa Romeo we had so many incredible people with like incredible stories and you know in the motorsport pathway and (laughs) sorry you should probably promote your boss that she was there oh yes (laughs) and we had um like Alana who was also you know she's the head of marketing at Ducati she's my boss Um, and she's going to the podcast as well we're going to be talking about great and we're going to be talking about sponsorship and marketing yeah Fantastic, fantastic. Yeah, so it was really funny. We we're actually at work um, two days pr- prior and I said to her, oh, um, yeah, so I'm going to Melbourne and have you ever heard of Belinda? And she's like, yeah, I know Belinda. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm going to have an interview with her um, in like two days' time. She's like, no way. And then she, I said to her, oh, you know, are you going to the girls on track? And I saw your name and she was like, yeah, are you going to be there? And I was like, yeah, can I have the day off to go? <laughs> <laughs> kind of what we so, <laughs> yeah. one of um 600 applications um that was successful um in attending the event um in the afternoon you went and visited some of the f1 teams um through a walkthrough and had a bit of a chat um you got to speak to Baltas and um made different connections throughout the day yeah so after the networking lunch we headed to the paddock um which was so exciting because I have never you know never been in a paddock it's really exciting for me um and we got to meet with Alfa Romeo team um we got to meet the physiotherapist not only the drivers like Joe and um uh Bottas but also we got to meet engineers marketing um it was really exciting for me I got to talk to like the head of marketing he was really awesome um and we kind of got to walk through the garage, garage tour, and some of the girls were lucky enough to um, change, the, get to change the tyres on the Formula One car, which wow. was, I, I wasn't quite, you know, su- as successful with that one. I didn't get that chance, but it was really cool to see that the girls did. Um, and they got to, you know, see the wheels, see the, um, the steering wheel. Um, yeah, and then after we had a, you know, Q&A with the team, uh, which I think was really beneficial. They were very, very kind with their time. Like they were very generous with their time um, with us. Um, and then we were fortunate enough to then jump over to the Williams Racing Team um, and we got a little, you know, tour of their hospitality um, section and got to talk to the two marketers, 
one who I was very fortunate to talk to, she um, is originally from Sydney. Um, so it was cool to share that kind of interest because it always seems that it's so far away, you know, to work with the Formula One team, it seems so far away. But hearing her story and hearing that she came from Sydney, like myself, was very encouraging because, you know, if she can do it, maybe I can do it too. And that was, I think that was really cool. Awesome. Sounds like such a great event. Yeah, it was incredible. I can't thank Priyanka and the Motorsport Australia team enough. <laughs> Very good, Hunt. Um, I want to know, how does this girl from Byron Bay have a love of snowboarding? <laughs> I know, right? Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, no, not quite. It's more surfing and all the rest of it. Um, no, I just kind of, well, I grew up doing every single sport on the earth. <laughs> but... Yeah, no, I took a love. I started snowboarding when I was like four years old. Uh, my mum's half, my mum's Kiwi, so that's where that connection comes from. And so, what do you love about like social media management, content creation? Um, honestly, I just love meeting people. Like, that's the biggest thing. And I also love events. Like, I've always, I always thought I would go into events, but um. I'm not sure that's the path for me. I think marketing for now. Um, I love, well, I used to love photography. That's where it started. Um, I started making YouTube videos with my YouTube channel, Moto MC. Um, it just started off as like bike reviews, product reviews, vlogs. And I honestly just enjoyed making YouTube videos um, with my friends. That was kind of just where it started. And then from those YouTube videos, you know, I started creating that portfolio and started, you know, trying different things like videography and um, posting on social media, like for my own personal brand during my time as a gymnast and snowboard, like doing the snowboarding. Um, and yeah, that's kind of where it all evolved was that YouTube channel. I think <laughs> that was that was the first stepping stone, something so small. Yeah, but if somebody is starting out, um, do you have any tips about getting started in, in social media or marketing? And not just yeah, I mean, general, yeah, yeah um, I think the best advice would just be to try everything that you have a passion in or have any interest in because, you know, I was always told that without go- – um, sorry, dreams without goals are just dreams and – you know, if you don't have that consistency and commitment to follow those dreams and and set goals for yourself, like it's not going to go anywhere. You have to be willing to, you know, volunteer at, I don't know, your local basketball game and take some photos for them, you know, in exchange for a bit of like a a tag. Like say if, if you have, you know, maybe even a racetrack near you and you go and you take some photos, you know, it's a bit of fun. You meet some people, that's where you network with the people and, you know, you never know what be around the door, around the corner. Like I went to Sydney Motorsport Park for the first time uh, a few weeks ago um, for the ASBK, the Australian Superbikes, and actually that's where I first met Kate Peck. And it was really interesting because, you know, I talked to her before meeting her at the Girls on Track and she was on my table for the Girls on Track, so... You know, you don't you don't know who you're going to see, and it's really good to like start that conversation. So you kind of mentioned about F1 before. Is that your ultimate goal? Are you wanting to get into F1 marketing, or um, or is there a different sport, maybe snowboarding, uh, that you actually want to go down? Or yeah, um, I have lots of dreams. <laughs> um, lots of dreams. Um, probably Obviously, yeah. Get it, Marley. Obviously, so. um yeah so f1 would be you know it's the peak of motorsport and that would be an ultimate goal um what about you yeah Yeah. the moto gp would be ultimate but i mean honestly i'm kind of living the dream right now (laughs) with ducati um you know i'm traveling with them to events um you know around motorsport all the time i'm talking motorsport you know and You know, I ride a motorbike now and what more could you ask for, you know, working a job that you love? I I think right now I'm very, very satisfied with where I am. And I think, you know, sure, in the future I want to, you know, get to a high level, maybe even work for Ducati overseas in Italy. 
Um, but I think I need to work on my uh, Italian first. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I think, you know, I'm open to whatever comes. Like I did not expect to be working for Motorsport Australia. I did not expect to be working for Ducati, but here I am. And I think, you know, whatever other opportunities arise, I'm, I'm ready with open arms. Um, I think, yeah, MotoGP, Formula One, NBA, anything of that sorts of, you know, elite athletes and elite sport is is the path I want to go down. Yeah, and, and again, like, I think you're going to achieve whatever you want to do. Like you've <laughs> achieved so much within the three years. I guess like the biggest points that I've taken away from our conversations today is that you're recommending to everyone just to network, network as much as you can, whether it's online or face-to-face, but you need to go out to the track and say hello, meet and greet people, as well as making people know who you are on social media. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And the other point is like to volunteer and doesn't necessarily need to be directly within motorsports. That's to try other sports, um, to build up your portfolio um, and then just see what other opportunities are out there within motorsport. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Just honestly, that's how I started was volunteering in sport and here I am. <laughs> Same story with Priyanka. That's how Pre started yeah. Actually, like now, I know a little bit more about motorsport. But when she first started and got the actual role at MA um, two years ago, motorsport was a very foreign sport to her. Yeah, yeah, totally. And like, like I said earlier, like I didn't come from motorsport. You don't have to be born into it. You don't have to be drilled into it as a kid. Like it can come when you're, I think it came to me when I was 18, you know, and, and I haven't left. <laughs> Well, that's fantastic. And I feel very blessed to have you within our community, Molly. Um, oh, thank, thank you for your story. I hope you inspired uh, some people to keep on going on their journey to fulfilling their dreams of doing marketing. But look at your pathway. It's been fantastic in the three years. But obviously it's gone with um, big sacrifices, having to move twice as we said and starting all over again, not once but twice. But look where it's landed you. Look, you're working marketing for Ducati for Australia, New Zealand. <laughs> Twenty one years of age, like Molly, that's amazing. So well done on your achievements to date. I can't wait to see where your journey takes. You might get you on in about another year's time to see what other twenty five million things you've done in the last twelve months. <laughs> Definitely stay in touch. Um, but how can people follow your journey? What's the best platform? Um, yeah, so I mean, either on Instagram or YouTube. Like I have the motorsport, uh, the motorcycling YouTube. Moto, I think it's at moto m dot c. Or I have Instagram, which is marley.chat. Um, that's probably the best way, either on LinkedIn or Instagram, I think, yeah. Yeah, no worries. Of course, we'll put it in those links. Um, if you want to contact Marley, I'm sure she'll be happy to answer any questions that you might have about getting started in sports marketing or sports social media. Again, it doesn't have to be motorsport related because there's only so many jobs within motorsports, but sometimes your path can take a little bit of a left to go back right, to come back left, to go straight ahead to fulfilling your dreams. And Marley's a true champion of um, that actual pathway. So congrats. And again, thank you very much for being my guest today. Thanks so much for having me. No worries. Thanks. As for the Formula One Grand Prix um, Girls on Track program, Well, Formula One is the pinnacle of motorsports um, for the global audience and and highly competitive racing teams. Um, And traditionally it has been a male-dominated sport, but through Girls on Track and these programs, efforts are being made to promote diversity and inclusion, including initiatives like the Girls on Track program. So by providing girls and women with opportunities to engage with motorsports and pursue their passions, which maybe, you know, in the past they haven't been been able to or not known the pathway to it. Um, such programs aim to inspire and empower these females to break the barriers and pursue career in motorsports, including something as, you know, high, highly rated as Formula One. And I think that's very special. Get ready for the race. Do you feel one step closer to being the next superstar behind the wheel? MotivateTraining.com.au for more. M-O-T-I-V, the number eight, Training.com.au. The green flag. Every episode gets you one step closer to the checkered flag. The Motorsport Coaching Podcast, getting you to the checkered flag faster.